Good afternoon, Floss Tube. My name is Mandy. Welcome to my channel, All About Cross Stitch. Today is Wednesday, May 31st. This month has flown by, just like it seems to do every other month. We're back again for some more Floss Tube. Um, I've got some great stuff to show. I was thinking that I only had two finishes, amazing, um, and a couple of other things to show, but as I was getting stuff together, we got quite a bit. Just gonna be mad. If you are new to my channel, welcome. This is Little Miss Stitches. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little voice. That is my cat Stitches. She steals the show, I tell you. There's a lot of times, if you haven't uh, seen before, she likes to run across the back of the couch, so we'll see if we can see her again. <laughs> she will be quick to curl up in my lap if I'm sitting just reading a book or something, um, but she doesn't like to necessarily be picked up and held, you know, so. Hence the, I know she wasn't actually saying hi when I told her to, that was let me down. <laughs> she had a little visitor this morning. I really hope this little baby got home. Not little, cause, so, okay. I work from home. My desk is right here on the other side of my camera. And we've got a really nice patio door here. Ground level apartment, patio. Usually we're seeing squirrels. Um, recently there's been a rabbit keeping her company. Birds, of course. Today I'm getting stuff going for my day, starting working. I don't even know what caught, like it wasn't anything that actually caught my eye. I didn't hear anything. Something just made me turn to look at the patio. There was another cat sitting there. They were, you know, there was a screen between them, but they were almost nose to nose, just like the other cat was getting a little nosy. She had a collar on, and um, so I know they belonged to somebody, and it was, it was a decent sized cat. Let's just say that. So I really hope that they got home. It, it just completely took me by surprise that, oh, hey, there's another cat sitting here. I've always wondered, how would Stitches react to having another cat in the household. So I, I, this was the first interaction I've seen and Stitches didn't make a peep. She didn't hiss at the other cat or anything. She just sat there like, who are you? So that was an interesting way to start the morning. So let's go ahead and get started. I am on my lunch break. I don't see this taking all that long, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so like I said, I do have two finishes. Um, this has been in my uh, whip list since June of last year. There is absolutely no reason that it needed to sit for so long because if I had five stitching days on this, I'd be surprised. So that's what happens with the smalls, that you start them and then you just put them away and they don't see the light of day. Um, so on Instagram, hashtag I dare you Sal, um, there's also a Facebook page. I believe this was started by Marnie's Mixed Bag. Um, kind of, they started a um, year long challenge, list 12 whips. They randomized those, I guess, in an order. So I've been trying to stick to an order of that. My next one has quite a bit of stitching on it. So we'll see if I stick to that order or not. Um, but this was the next one on the list in that particular order. And so I got it done. Um, so it is called Injustice, uh, artwork by um, Rebel Stitcher Designs on Instagram. Um, they've got a website or Gumroad or something, but I followed them on um, Instagram. And uh, yeah, so this was released June, I don't know necessarily when it was released, but in a result of June 24th, 2022, um, the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned, canceled, however you want to say it. So definitely a heavy day in her history. And so I decided I wanted to stitch it. This is stitched on a piece of um, collar and cotton grab bag. I want to say it's about a 20 count probably from it's tiny in terms of the stitches. I did it one over one, well, I guess one over. And I used one of my favorite reds Color and Cotton, Dracula. I just adore this red. So pretty. So yeah, 
this will probably end up in my stitching journal if I ever decide to add to it. So glad to have that one done. This was my eighth finish of the year, I believe. I tell you, my hair is going to drive me mad. So I'm pretty sure last, my last video, which was almost three weeks ago now, I had mentioned that I was going to North Carolina. So my family um, went to North Carolina. We just got back this past Saturday. I was gone for a week. Um, it would be my great grandmother's house that um, upon her passing, the house went to one of her sons. So it would be one of my mom's uncles, one of my great uncles. It's his second home now. And so he just allows the family to um, be able to use it when um, in town or whatever, when he's not using it. And so we had a great house to be able to stay in for the week. Um, nice beds, you know, just, it was up in the mountains. So if you follow me on Instagram, stitchingb82, um, you probably would have seen a bunch of pictures. I was, I know I posted a bunch of stuff in, in my stories throughout. Um, so the community that we stayed in was called Lake Lure. Um, fun fact about that is that some of the scenes from Dirty Dancing was filmed there. And we we actually spent some time out in the out in the road where um, the house that we stayed at in um, because the yard of my what would have been my great grandma's house was in the very opening scenes of Dirty Dancing so really cool little history there um, so basically they're um, at one point in the very very beginning of the movie they're in the car and um, it's just kind of a curvy road you see a, a mountain off to the distance um, so yeah, we were, um, we, we found a video clip on, um, I think just on YouTube or something. And so we were, we walked outside to like compare the view. Um, so it looks like from the, there was a fire, um, at this house back in the like late eighties, early nineties, grandma had a, or great grandma had a fire and the house was rebuilt. So we don't know if this one particular tree that we can see in the movie was torn down because of the fire, you know, like because they had to rebuild the house, needed the space. Um, my uncle, or the great uncle may know who really would have known would have been my granddaddy, who of course has now passed. Um, so it was just really cool to be able to see that comparison. It's been years since, um, in fact, I don't know that we ever actually compared so much. We just knew that they filmed there and all that, so. Anyways, long story long, I said that I wanted to try to get this thing going and here I'm chit-chatting. While we were there, we were seeing family, um, spent some time, you know, went a few different um, nearby towns and all that. Um, definitely had some town time. I actually ended up stitching every day we were there except for one day. So I didn't think that I would actually get that much stitching, but in the evenings, okay, so this house is in the mountains. Um, and because somebody does not live there, you know, all the time, there's no cable, there's no internet, no Wi-Fi, anything like that. Luckily, there is very good service, like for our cell phones, but no Wi-Fi or anything. Um, so I did actually have an evening that I was sitting at the kitchen table. Others were relaxing and everything, and I was just sitting at the um, kitchen table stitching, and I turned on a floss tube and that for a little while. Um, but while I was there, I actually got a finish. And this is the reason why I actually took this piece was because I knew that I was close enough to a finish that I was hoping that I could make it happen, and I did. This one, I'm so excited to have finished. Another one that's been lingering, it sat for a good long while. So the only reason why it's still been sitting out here, like most of my other stuff, is just distracted and working on other stuff. But we are talking about um, Silver Creek Samplers Moonshine. This beast of a moon, I was so glad to have it done. Um, I did end up getting off on my stitches a little bit, so there was some frogging that, well, no, I didn't want to frog, so there was some fudging that had to take place. I remember a while ago trying to figure out where did I go wrong once I realized where my mistake was, there was no ripping out that was gonna happen. Um, so basically, like, there's a dark gray outline around it, so I did that first, and then I was doing the fill-in. So I remember starting from down here, stitched my way up and around, and it was somewhere over in here that I misstitched. And so it set the moon down by two stitches, I think it is. And so there's some things off. 
if you can see where it's off, don't tell me. Because I don't care at this point. It's done. If someone's looking that close at my stitching to see that the moon is stitched wrong, they're looking way too close. We're gonna get the needle minder out of here because there's a needle on it. We don't wanna lose that. We're done. I love this piece. I cannot wait to get it framed and stitched on my wall. So, yep, we're done. I'm bringing it a little bit. So on the original design, and you think this is my first time doing a floss tube, I can't hold up. Um, it's got it um, 2022 down here, no, 2020, in the hill. I left that out, I just stitched it all. Um, but otherwise, we got all the little doodads, little swirly gigs, and we're done. I love this piece, love it, love it. So my plan eventually is, um, because I want this on my wall, um, Michael, at least, I'm sure a lot of Michaels do this. Um, I know mine specifically has um, one of the employees that works there is a stitcher, so they're really good with being able to um, properly mount and frame these uh, things. So what they offer is that if you purchase a frame from their like ready-made, you know, just buy it off the shelf, buy it and go home, they'll, I think what they do is they pin it. And they'll actually assemble it all into that uh, frame that you purchased there, all as one. They put the fancy backing on it so that it looks like it's been professionally framed. They put their hardware across it. Really nice work. So that's my plan eventually to do this. It should be decent size, you know, regular size enough that I can find just a regular frame. Um, this is stitched on a piece of 18 count Artemis from Bestitch Me. One of my favorite pieces that I've ever stitched. I'm glad to have that one done. Surprisingly, I did not actually take any full coverage stitching with me when I went. Usually I do, um, but I was really hoping I'd be able to focus on getting that one finished. And then I just took another small, I stitched on this once. Um, so Country Cuddle, Cottage Needleworks, um, Spring Birds. I was very sweetly gifted uh, the pattern from Laura, Stitching by the Shore. She has already finished hers and it looks great. And here we go. And yes, I've got a thread hanging. I've started another. Oh, I started the bird. Yeah, there's a bird sitting on top of that bird case, bird house. So when I picked it back up, I still had the pink house that I had to finish. And then I did all of the green one, started the bird. And yeah, this is stitched on another color and cotton grab bag. Um, I don't know. 16 or 18 count, no clue the name because grab bags aren't labeled. Um, and I just pulled threads, I, it's just my own conversion. Um, so I literally went through all of my over dyed threads and said, I like this color for this pink. I like this color for this blue. I like this for this orange. Um, I do know that that orange I don't remember. I know the bird that's starting there, possibly, probably that orange is um, bitter, bittersweet. I was gonna be able to say it right there. And I don't wanna dig through the flosses. I've used it on something else before. Anyways, gassed, really pretty orange. So I literally just went through, did my own conversion and picked out some really bright springy colors. So very happy with that so far. Okay, the next piece. You have not seen it yet. I'm more than halfway through, um, but I am stitching a model. I don't know if I'm, I know I've mentioned it before, um, for uh, Michelle at Bendy Stitchy. And when I sent her an update, um, I don't know, it's been a couple weeks ago now, that um, I, I sent her an update of things and we were talking and she said she didn't really feel, okay, stitches, I got stuff right there. Yay. Um, she decided that she did not feel the need to hide her models. And so she wanted me to be able to share what I'm working on. And so we're gonna show it. I've not yet posted a picture of this on my Instagram. I plan to though. 
stuff. We're not gonna be able to hold this all at once. We're still dropping stuff. It's stitched with sulkies. I'm not gonna be able to hold all of these. We're still, <laughs> I can't hold all these. I'm not used to holding. So those are some of the colors. And then we've got two greens and a black. This is my first time really diving into Sulky as much. Um, I know I've finished one piece, um, but that was just a small. So this is definitely a much bigger piece that, um, so I'm really getting into using the Sulky and loving it. Definitely gonna have to use more. I'm gonna try to keep this in and yet I've got cat hair. So I'm not sure exactly when this is going to be released. Obviously it depends on me getting it done. Um, originally we discussed that I would have it done by June 1st, that's tomorrow. Um, and then Michelle was planning on releasing it in um, like, what was it, August, where they were doing the expo. I guess expo is not taking place this year um, or you know the expo that's been the last couple years isn't taking place. So. She's a little loose on um, getting the, um, me getting it done. She'll release it at some point. So I just need, this is gonna be my focus piece. I really need to get it done. I'm so excited about this, I love this piece. We're, we're probably not even gonna be able to hold it up and do it justice. It's still in my Q-snap. I don't wanna lose my placement of where I'm at. Um, but here's the first half. It's basically, it's a reprodu reproduction sampler, um, morning sampler. I believe she's calling it Ramsdale Sampler. So the words across the top, in memory of Justice Ramsdale. I don't have the final picture because obviously it's still in process, um, but it's gonna have another, it's another name. She's got a whole story um, of the piece. So it was died July 13th of 1863, I'm sorry, 1836. But I've been loving working on this and see if I can hold it up. That hill, or like the grassy, is done in those specialty stitches. I don't remember what they're called. Basically they're big half stitch. So I'm really hoping my Q-snap isn't crushing them. When I do the final, I'll make sure that they're good to go before I do the final send off. So this is where we're at. That, um, gravestone is a lot of white but it went really quickly i think i got to a point where i would do a length of white and then go up and do some more of the grain do a length of white do more of the grain so i was able to break it up a little bit so really really appreciate uh, michelle working with me on um me being able to stitch that it is stitched on a piece of fox and rabbit um baked clay I believe it's 16 count, it could be 18. Um, but yeah, so the original piece was stitched on a like perforated paper. And so um, Michelle was able to work with, I'm, I stitch on Ada, I'm not a linen stitcher. And so she was trying to find a piece of Ada that would resemble that perforated paper. Fox and Rabbit very graciously hooked her up, got her onto some Ada, and so she was able to provide this. Um, Michelle just talked about this last week in her last floss tube, so um, when she was showing some fox and, um, fox and rabbit that um, this is the model that she was referring to. So I'm so proud of it and I can't wait to get it done. And it, it's going quickly, I just need to focus on it. it. It's totally me dragging my feet just absolutely love this piece and I'm going to be so proud of it when it's done. So thank you, thank you to Michelle for allowing me to stitch for you and to share it. Okay, get moving here. Um, next whip to share. This is part of um, Michelle's hosting the first most magnificent, most magnificent Ink Circles Round Robin uh, with our Patreon. And so I'm part of the Ada group. And so my partners, um, the first partner market on is, excuse me, doing After the Roses. And here we go. 
so my stitching is just like this little loop of the um leaf and from here so um the michelle that's in my group not michelle garrett but the other michelle um did all of this beautiful stitching so i'm doing from here over this is also fox and rabbit it's an ada 14 count ada ballet slippers i believe and i was gifted that needle minder from michelle so she included that with the piece so very fun gotta get moving on that i gotta be able to get that shipped out by the end of this month as well well so many deadlines Alrighty. so the full coverage that i have to share this week i thought i had the picture ready not gonna look like a whole lot at the moment because i'm still in the upper left hand corner um in the very background but what's exciting is that on page one i am going to be able to get to the witch's hat so um i'm just right up in here this is mini witch way artwork by lisa parker Charter by Heaven and Earth. I cannot wait to get to the orange of that dress. Um, but for now, I'm just really up in that corner. It's really not gonna look like a whole lot besides a blob. But here we go. So I'm really not paying attention to any kind of page breaks, um, but I know page one was somewhere around in here. Um, we're just stitching as we go. I've said it before that I don't stick to like the 10 by 10 blocks or pages or anything like that anymore with Pattern Keeper. I pick a symbol and I go. So that's why we've got one, you know, these random little stitches here not filled in there is just because I like to be able to, and that's the best thing about Pattern Keeper is that it will highlight your symbols and you don't miss things very easily. Um, 16 count white Ada, two strands full across as I do with all of my full coverage. And there we go, that is Mini Witch Way. I did stitch a little bit on my Midnight Messenger artwork by Ann Stokes, really not enough to see much of a difference compared to the last time. Um, but yeah, that is the stitching that I have done. All right, got some amazing, amazing stitchy kindness. Happy mail. So, Again, Michelle was talking about this last week on, or on her last floss tube that um, Whip Down Sal 2023 um, that so for her Patreon and YouTube members that she was sending goodies out. And so at one point she was talking about having some fox and rabbit fabric that if you finished a hade, you weren't just getting floss drops. I finished a hade. So I got some really great stuff. So she wrote her note on the back of a sticky note but is that not michelle i love it so i did get some floss straps is this from that um sarcy girl but they're perfect i love them they're skulls there's a pumpkin so very cool i will add those at some point i don't really do a whole lot of the floss hanging from um, these I usually just bobbinate, but I do have um, some silks and such that would go good on something like that rather than just my regular DMC. Um, because I got three finishes for the whip down sale, I got some goodies here. So she also included a needle minder from Fangirl Fibers. And then like I said, she included a piece of fabric. <laughs> Can you even? So it's a 16 count um, in it gloaming. Fat quarter. Oh my goodness. Can you believe that pink? So pretty. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Michelle. I'm going to have so much fun trying to find something good to go on that piece. So nice. Thank you, Michelle. Really appreciate you. So a few weeks ago, um, well, it was right after Stitch North. I didn't go to, um, but everyone had all kinds of goodies and freebies and all that good stuff. I know there was a good, um, big goodie bag and all that. Um, Deanna from Darling and Whimsy had posted on her Instagram. She was sharing all her stuff and she posted um, 
you know, the like ask me anything boxes or whatever. If you didn't go, you could be entered for if she was doing, sharing some of the goodies that um, she had duplicates of or just didn't want, didn't need. And so I won. So she included a gift or um, a postcard. So this is from St. John's, New Newfoundland and Labrador. Chimney pots and brightly colored houses are characteristic of older parts of the city. That's really pretty. And so one of the um, goodies, I guess, from the um, goodie bag, she designed um, Wild Whimsy Bear. So, and there was a piece of material in Brenda Needle. So I have not stitched with Brenda Needle yet, so that's gonna be fun to get to stitch that. So cute little bear is going to go on Ada. So I don't know if everyone, oh, there's even a needle on there. I totally missed that. How cool is that? Um, I don't know if everyone got Ada or if there was some, either way. That's awesome that I got Ada, since I'm such an Ada stitcher. She included the official needle minder. Stitch number that is got some half to it. And then I got two of these needle minders from the sewing shop. It's a little stamp that's been put in resin. I don't know how well that's showing up. And then I got a second one. So very cool. Can't have too many needle minders. Um, I got a Freddy the Frog pin. Let's see what else we got here. Sheba Designs. We got some buttons. There's a 2023 one in there as well. And then just for fun, she included the cow. So thank you so much to Deanna. Not sure if she watches, but thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Just a couple more minutes before my alarm is going to go off that I got to go back to work. Um, the very last thing that I have to share is my Bestitch Me Fabric of the Month. Uh, this particular month is from the Neutral Club, Neutral Club. So if you get that fabric, haven't received it yet, because I know I just got mine yesterday. In fact, yesterday was a fantastic mail day because I got Michelle's package. I got Deanna's package. I got my fabric, oops, um, my fabric of the month. And then I had also ordered a diamond painting tray. And so... Yeah, the diamond pa painting tray box that it came in couldn't fit in my mailbox, so I live in an apartment. The mailboxes are right here out the in the hallway. Postal just left that on my doorstep. I went to the mailbox to grab the rest of my mail. Three packages, no envelopes. It was the best mail day ever. So if you don't want to see this, look away. Um, name kind of gives away the color, but beautiful, beautiful neutral. No clue what I'm going to put on that. It will be in the stash for presents. So that's my stitching. That's my haul. That's my stitching. Stitching heavy mail. Yeah, I think that's about it. I had a great trip. Safe. <laughs> I did fall while I was in North Carolina. Day two of the trip. Um, I still don't even know what I did coming out of the house and face planted it, screaming in pain because both of my ankles suddenly hurt. So I don't know if they both, if I rolled both ankles, if I tripped over something, I don't even know. Luckily, pain didn't last very long. I was like worried that they'd just start swelling up. Luckily that didn't happen. Um, I went to bed that night having taken a couple of leave and woke up the next day feeling fine. Bruised ego, of course, as one does. But my dad used to tell me growing up that I could trip over the design in the carpet. And so apparently even at, at age 40, that still follows. So who knows? But yep, it was a great trip. Um, two different days, we checked out a couple different pinball places, so those were fun. Um, just, we just went and played some games for a couple hours or whatever each place, so, um, wasn't like I participated in any, um, tournaments or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, things are going good here. It's end of May, it's Michigan, it's getting hot, 
the humidity is through the roof, I'm sure. I'm surprised I have not yet turned on my air. I I just got my last my most recent power bill and it was probably the lowest that I've had probably in a year. So it's like I wanna keep it low, but I'm also I'm here all day, so I don't really want to be sitting in this sweltering hot either. I got a couple fans going though, so it's usually pretty comfortable. The worst time of the day is like five, six o'clock patio faces west it turns into an oven here uh, a lot of days I'll close the blinds when the sun's getting this direction kind of help keep it a little lower but yeah AC is bound to come on anybody else living here probably would have had it on earlier than this but last week while we were out of town um, my friend Crystal was keeping an eye on stitches and she was she actually had to turn the furnace back on because there was a frost advisory one night and it got down to like 37 degrees now we're 88 90 i don't even know but it's michigan that's if you watch jennifer upton you'll see she's doing a temperature chart um really pretty flowers i just saw an update from her last night that because she lives I want to say maybe Grand Rapids area like that direction Lansing maybe maybe it's Lansing anyways she lives western side of the state and yeah she had posted her update last night that she had a really bright red in her temperature chart so you know blues last week and reds this week so that's Michigan that is pure Michigan so um but yeah we're just getting back into the swing of working again this is a short week for me because yesterday was um not yesterday monday was memorial day so i had i took off friday what would it have been the 19th and then went back to work yesterday so i had what is that 11 days off counting the two weekends so nice little bit of time off but gotta get back into the swing of things you know like everything else that it's um great um I'm definitely at the age. Great to go on trips, great to see, you know, extended family and all of that kind of stuff, but there is absolutely nothing like being back home. Um, I had a very, very relaxing weekend. We got back to town by like 5 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Um, 740 mile drive, so we got a very early start. We really just stopped for fuel once, we stopped for food once, I think, a couple bathroom stops, but we just kept trucking along and um, so it was nice to get back home. Miss Stitches, of course, but she was very, very well taken care of. Um, Crystal loves her as much as I do, so she, she spoiled her rotten, just as I would. So, um, but yeah getting back into the stitch, um, life of stitching again, um, you know, back in my own space and all of that kind of stuff. So yeah, I spent the weekend stitching and just stitching and stitching, worked on my diamond painting a little bit. Um, but yeah, things are good. No complaints here. So I hope everyone is doing well. Hope you're getting in lots of stitching. If you want to share what you were stitching on, I would love to know. I I'm wanting to get back into answering comments. I know I've been so bad about that and for that I apologize but I really appreciate everyone who takes the time to comment. I read your comments. I'm just bad about replying so I thank you for sticking around. If you like what you've seen hit the subscribe button all that good stuff and uh, yeah we'll see you again next time. Take care everybody.